This how-to video is about automating device tags based on location. Here we can see a legend of the rows on the left, or I'm on page 9, and I'm on row 14 to 22. And we'll notice by dragging in this motor, I can see a nice preview of it, and it drags in as a schematic symbol that automatically gets named with a tag based on its location. So there I'm on M15, M16, lining up with row 16, or moving it right down to M19 or M20. That's great for single symbol devices, but what about devices that have multiple symbols, such as a contactor? Here's a contactor in my library, again, seeing a nice preview of what that contactor is, but it is comprised of a legend, a coil, as well as the contacts available. In the case of this three-phase power, this is where the contact should go, but this isn't what should be naming the device. In this case, it defaults to K921. What should name the device is the other symbols and coils. So let's go flip over to my PLC view and put the coil and contact in this place. And we'll notice by putting the master legend is going to name this device K1008 because it's on page 1008. And we'll notice references between those devices very easily. We'll have a reference to a master legend, a reference to the coil, or a reference from the legend over to the three contacts, keeping them all up to date with the appropriate device name. Even doing a master change, like changing the sheet properties or the sheet name from 10 or 9 to 11, We'll notice all of the row information being updated with the new sheet name, as well as any appropriate device that is named after the sheet as well. This renaming of devices can save a designer a lot of time, but also make sure that on the shop floor, they can very easily interpret these drawings and find the devices they need.